we're actually required specifically to know something about the pattern in melting point of the elements as you go across a period. So here's some data for the melting points of the elements in periods 2, running from lithium through to neon, and period 3 from sodium through to argon. And there is again a pattern that we can observe here which repeats itself. The melting point increases up to a maximum at group 4, and then drops down, so the last four elements in the period have very low melting points. That's certainly true for period 2. It's also true for period 3. An increase from sodium up to silicon, and then a sudden drop down for the last four elements in the period. In this slide, we show you how that pattern of melting point increasing across a period and then dropping down dramatically is repeated in the later periods as well. Here's period 4 and here's period 5. This time the periods are much longer and the maximum melting point is reached in about the 6th or 7th element in the period. But if you, you think about it in the periodic table, that's going to occur somewhere in the middle of the transition block. And we do see the fall as we get towards the right-hand side of the periodic table. Here's period 5, an increase to a maximum, and then a drop on the right-hand side of the periodic table. Period 6, a longer period, an increase, somewhere to the middle of the periodic table, and then a drop down again. And here's the incomplete period 7. Can't see the decrease because we've yet to synthesize and study elements on the right-hand side of that period. So just to summarize, the pattern that repeats itself is that the melting point increases to the middle of the period and then drops. That's the end of this short video presentation about the properties of the periodic table.